Good evening. I'm Brendan Connolly, president of this year's AI Seattle Board of Directors. On behalf of the 2020 Honor Awards Committee and AIA Seattle, I want to welcome you to the 70th annual Honor Awards for Architecture. Before we start, I wanted to take a moment to recognize the land that we are on. We wanted to acknowledge the Coast Salish peoples of this land, which touches the shared waters of all the tribes and bands within the Suquamish, Tulalip, Muckleshoot, and the federally unrecognized Duwamish peoples. We thank you as guests on this land. AIA Seattle believes our world needs visionary and integrative thinking of architects and designers to create design solutions that can positively impact our communities. That is why we champion the central role of architects in creating and sustaining a better built environment. Guided by our values of excellence, advocacy, integrity, and stewardship, we prepare our profession to lead and we deploy design to make a difference so that we can all do our best to work in a culture of design that fosters equitable, resilient, and thriving communities. This statement of vision, mission, and values is the product of AIA Seattle's five-year strategic plan, was developed by our board of directors and staff over the last many years. These words are more relevant now than ever, given all that we have been through in recent months, as we have grappled with environmental and societal changes all around us. I am grateful to be a part of such a talented and committed design community that has the potential and the passion to affect positive change in our world. Tonight is a really powerful celebration of that idea. We have all been tested this year, and the work that we do as architects must continually do more and do better to address the needs of our environment and the communities that we serve. The amazing work that has been submitted for this year's program reflects the innovation and the spirit of that notion in a powerful and different way with all the projects that have been recognized. Importantly, what we celebrate tonight is not just architecture, but the result of partnerships. Partnerships with our clients, our communities, with the many integrated design disciplines and the trade partners who work hand in hand with architects to realize the vision and success of these projects. Many of you are here tonight with us and we are extremely grateful for your support. Our celebration tonight is possible because of this support. Many of you have contributed to the success of the Honor Awards program for numerous years. We look forward to the future when we have the opportunity to gather in a shared space to celebrate this event. For now, let's all appreciate the deafening applause that is clearly emanating from all of our basements and living rooms. Please join me in thanking our sponsors. We'd first like to thank our media sponsor, Gray. For our silver sponsors, thank you to Abracadabra Printing, Thank you to Dow Built, AEI Affiliated Engineers. We'd like to thank AHBL. Thank you to Code Unlimited. Thank you, Dow Sill. We'd like to thank BDO. We'd like to thank the Burger Partnership. Thank you to CKC Structural Engineers. We'd like to say thank you to Lane Powell. A thank you to our friends at MKA. Magnus and Clemensic Associates. We'd like to thank PCL Construction. We'd also like to thank Quantum Consulting Engineers. And finally, with our silver sponsors, thank you to Thornton Tomasetti. For our gold level sponsors, we would like to thank Arup. Thank you to Eekman Construction. We'd like to thank FSI Engineers. We'd also like to thank GLY Construction. Thank you to Hoffman Construction. Thank you to Initial Pixel, Print and Design. We'd like to say thank you to Malsam Sang, Structural Engineering. Thank you to Microsoul Resources. We'd like to thank PCS Structural Solutions. Thank you to Rushing. We'd like to say thank you to Selling Construction. Thank you to Stantec. Thanks to Swenson Say Faget, Structural Engineers. Thank you to Thomas Fragnoli Construction. And finally, rounding out our gold sponsors, thank you to USI. Your support means the world to all of us at AIA Seattle in helping this event to sustain and continue. 
We'd also like to take a moment to thank Lisa Richmond and the very dedicated and committed AIA Seattle staff who have worked tirelessly to not only make this event happen, but to sustain the many programs that AIA Seattle is continuing despite recent challenges. It's an amazingly talented group of individuals, and I would like to thank all of them for the work that they do. We have a really exciting program for you tonight. Tonight represents a celebration of wonderful projects and efforts among teams, and also a really uh, wonderful continuation of the fifth year of the Energy and Design Awards, and also the third year of the Young Voices Selection, which is a, a really wonderful panel of emerging voices and talent in our profession. Uh, it's a rich part of tonight's program. So without further ado, I would like to offer a very warm welcome to our hosts for this evening's event, Ming Yuan and Kevin Snook. Thank you, Brendan. Welcome to the first virtual AIA Seattle Honor Awards presentation. AIA Seattle is proud to host the 2020 Honor Awards in a worldwide broadcast. Ming and I are honored to be here this evening as your hosts. It has been a challenging year for a lot of us. And while there have been a lot of obstacles to overcome, the field of architecture continues to move ahead, continuing to address inclusion, climate requirements, and making the world a beautiful place. The practice of architecture in our region enjoys a well-established legacy of curiosity, creativity, and drive for design excellence. We share an exhaustive pursuit of ideas that are both human and humane, that create beauty and promote equity, that dissolve barriers to unify our communities. The Honor Awards is a platform that recognizes the full body and the very best of our collective work. Thank you, Kevin. We are here to celebrate not only the end product of design, but also the influences and stories behind it. To frame the evaluation goals from our region, AIA Seattle has carefully crafted a set of considerations that we believe define a foundation for design excellence and address important issues in our community. The jury then weighs these considerations with their own personal and collective criteria, informing their deliberation and their decision-making process. We had over 100 submissions this year which were categorized into three groups, built work, conceptual projects, and in its third year, research and innovation. The jury evaluated submissions and their award selections were assigned to one of the following award categories, Energy and Design Award, now in its fifth year, Honorable Mention, Young Voices Selection as an Honorable Mention, Award of Merit, and Award of Honor. As we strengthen our collective commitment to building performance within the context of a changing climate, resource scarcity, and sustainable communities, AIA Seattle is pleased to once again commend these qualified built projects that have made significant strides in energy reduction while also maintaining the highest level of design excellence. To bring you this Honor Awards program, a dedicated committee of volunteers have invested countless hours during the past year setting up our newly christened virtual program to ensure its success. Thank you, committee. We'd also like to recognize the efforts of the staff at our AIA chapter. We are truly fortunate to have such a talented and dedicated team. I would like to offer a special thank you to Cassie Blair and Zoe Guckenheimer. As the AIA professional program managers, they have both helped guide the Honor Awards Committee. Most importantly, we'd like to thank our amazingly talented jury, Marsha, Pascal, and Tatiana, for generously donating their valuable time. Their contributions reflect the passion that our community has for design excellence. We are grateful to them and appreciated their diverse backgrounds and experiences represented on the jury. The depth of review, the inspiring discourse, and the careful consideration they gave to every project was extraordinary. Tonight, we are looking forward to hearing their insights. Finally, we want to thank you, the Seattle design community. Your creativity and transformative innovation and remarkable attention to craft have a global impact. We are all here to celebrate you. It has been a personal inspiration for us to spend time with each of our jurors through the deliberation process. A heartfelt thank you goes to Marsha Madam from San Francisco, Pascal Saban 
from New York City and Tatiana Bilbao from Mexico City. In this difficult year, we're so grateful for our jury. Introducing our jury in their own words. Hi, this is Marsha Manum of Letty Manum Stacy Architects. It's been an honor to be a part of this jury and a pleasure to see the great work by the members of this chapter. I've been practicing in San Francisco since 1977 and with my partners, Bill Letty and Richard Stacy, since the early 1980s. We are now a 35 person firm in San Francisco with a diverse group of architects and designers united around the idea that architecture can help lead the way to a just, healthy, and regenerative future, and the belief that everyone deserves good design. Our practice is focused on mission-driven design in three areas, affordable, supportive housing, education, and community projects. Our work is guided by two primary values. One, designing for a resilient future to advance high-performance architecture and low-carbon design. We have been engaged in sustainable design at a local, state, and national level for over 30 years. Sustainable design is a foundation of our work, and on each project, we strive to advance design excellence and high-performance design. The second value is designing for social equity. We believe that architecture is a social justice issue with a critical role in building strong communities and providing dignified and inspiring environments for everyone. I'll share a few examples of our mission-driven projects. One, the Rene Casanave Apartments at the Gateway to downtown San Francisco provides new supportive housing for the formerly homeless. The Edwin M. Lee Apartments we recently completed and that provides supportive housing for both unhoused veterans and low-income families with shared support services. Sweetwater Spectrum Community is a national housing model for adults on the autism spectrum and a net zero energy pilot project in Sonoma, California. The San Francisco Art Institute is a transformation of an historic landmark pier to an art school with integrated renewable energy and meeting the 2030 commitment goals. The Jacobs Institute for Design Innovation at the University of California, Berkeley provides flexible innovation labs on a tight budget and a restrictive site and achieves LEED Platinum rating and a 94% energy reduction. The Ed Roberts Campus in Berkeley, California is a nonprofit center for the independent living and disabled rights movement, designing for social equity and integrating sustainable design and universal design. We are now focused on transforming our practice in, with three actions. One, to commit to zero carbon in all of our work. Two, to contribute to environmental and social equity. And three, to advocate for positive change at a local, state, and national level. I encourage everyone to transform their practices and commit to these actions for a just, resilient, and carbon positive future. Thank you. Hi, I'm Pascal Sablon, and I believe strong and healthy communities, rich in diversity, make strong nations. As architects and designers, we have the power to represent more than ourselves, and representation is quintessential to achieving equitable diversity. And through my experience at Eris Architects, FX Collaborative, and S9 Architecture, I'll speak to how I embed advocacy through the built environment, starting with the African Burial Ground National Monument, which is a project about keeping history. When they're excavating to build yet another federal building, they came across a few hundred uh, remains of African slaves. And this project is keeping history in record that in all of downtown Manhattan, an estimated 20,000 remains are buried. And so all the adjacent projects and properties have all been literally built on the backs of our ancestors. The Amhi Haiti campus project was a great example of resiliency through construction and volunteering. As an ACE mentor, we worked together to design a resilient project that would replace a school that was demolished in the earthquake and a project that's both equitable for 
hurricanes, as well as earthquake tendencies. The KFD 219 residential project is also about environmental justice, where we calculated azimuths and angles of the sun to sculpt and shape the size and shape of the project and to be mindful about the heat gain and glare all while maximizing views. The Museum of the Built Environment is also about environmental justice, which is a lead project that leverages the, the sustainable strategies to host a museum dedicated to architecture that has permanent and temporary galleries, uh, auditorium and community spaces, and a light rail that goes through the building. 888 Boylston is the highest performing speculative office building in all of New England, where we employed as many techniques as humanly possible to speak to the idea of how architecture can not just take away from its site, but how it can give back as well. Fifth Crossing Bridge talks about infrastructure, not just for cars, but for pedestrians, as a way of connecting both the old and new communities as they build towards a brighter future. Bronx Point is environmental justice and design justice, where we captured the local community's culture through the built environment. It is also a 542 affordable housing unit with the first ever brick and mortar hip hop museum, retail component and community facilities that fights against gentrification and culturally reflects the project through the built environment. The Milo Haiti campus also understands and leverages that 85,000 amputees are now part of the Haiti community and society post that earthquake. And understanding that we cannot depend on the local grid, we created ADA compliant ramps on the exterior of all the buildings to ensure that our, our campus is 100% um, accessible no matter your mobility challenges. Cleveland Headquarters Foundation, again, is about design justice because it was a lot of advocacy through the community community engagement, as well as programming that are focused completely for that purpose, as well as leveraging the architectural techniques of the site and be reflective and catalytic for the community of Puff. And through my work with Beyond the Built Environment, I founded it to represent marginalized people, both within the profession and within the communities most underserved by it. And through that, I've been able to elevate the contributions and identities of 420 women and BIPOC designers and so proud to do that and say it loud. Thank you. Hello, my name is Tatiana Bilbao. I'm the principal and founder of Tatiana Bilbao Studio, which is a Mexico City-based architecture studio founded in 2004. I operate with the core belief that architecture has the opportunity to create an impact in the life of, of others. I believe also that architecture needs to revisit their core values to understand how is to become the other to design, not designing for others or to others with others. Being that other is my everyday struggle and pursue. I absolutely believe that uh, architecture needs to become the translation of each of us idea on how to inhabit this, this world. Our work includes projects that ranges from, um, I always say, botan a botanical garden where life starts and a funeral house. We have been working in several uh, projects that are accompanying different stages of humans' lives. For me, that it's a huge responsibility. I don't see it only as a profession. I see it as the opportunity of understanding and translating someone else's possibilities to create their own representation in this world. We have been uh, working in different um, parts of the world we have projects in Europe, in North America, in China, as well in Central and South America. I have been teaching uh, since long. I believe also the possibility of understanding how to connect with other generations is uh, with teaching. I am currently a recurring visiting professor at the Yale University. School of Architecture, and I have taught at Harvard GSD, the AA Association in London, Columbia University, uh, at GZAP, Rice University, um, in Chile, and in Germany, 
uh, among others. I think that um, what I'm most uh, proud of is being able to create a team that it's uh, multidisciplinary, but also multi-ethnic, that is able to work um, in cooperation and uh, in collaboration with each other to really become those translators of our surroundings and, uh, and the needs of the people that we work for. Well, we had a, a really great few days reviewing these uh, projects, which first, I think all, all members of the jury want to compliment uh, Seattle uh, AIA. The, the level of the uh, submissions were incredible. Um, the level of work is very, very high. So we had a really hard time uh, coming to decisions, uh, but it was really helpful for us to have the, the jury consideration so clearly outlined for us, um, the four points of inspiration, problem solving, environmental sensitivity, and social impact. Those happily align with our three viewpoints of the world. Uh, and you know I think it's a very important lens to look at what we do as a profession. And I think there uh, is incredible work happening in Seattle. Uh, that definitely uh, resonates with these four goals. And um, fellow jurors, please chime in. Sure, I want to say, um, although those really aligned with our values, we did bring very unique and distinct kind of point of views that was instantly respected and uh, considered as we discussed the projects at length, really dove into the concepts, the missions, and what they were trying to achieve. So for me, part of the uh, kind of purpose and recognition and the reviewing process also consisted with understanding through the lens of community, uh, community outreach, how was the community engaged in the design and execution of the project? That was huge for me. And then as well as spatial justice. And for me, spatial justice goes hand in hand with environmental justice, but also culturally embedding um, the individuals of that community into the built environment, having architecture be a representation of lives and aspirations. So that was like the little Pascal extra that I added to my consideration, <laughs> but I really love the way that it was all welcomed and echoed through our conversations and respected while we deliberated through these amazing uh, submissions that is completely, uh, I'm in awe and uh, very, very impressive. I echo my colleague's comments. It was a, a real pleasure to uh, be able to work with beautiful in, and inspiring projects. I also thought that in addition of what Marsha was saying on the quality of the projects, I think that they were also, I was very surprised that all of them uh, were projects that really tackle um, social issues uh, envir with environmental sensibility, much more than in other places that I have seen. So for me, it was really um, inspiring the fact that I was a body of projects that were really committed to uh, a, a, to the environment, to the to the culture, to the to the to the society, and this is kind of a a light in at the end of this tunnel in these moments that we're living. I also like um, Pascal. Uh, my own uh, <laughs> my own personal view was to really uh, uh, enhance those projects that were really sensible to uh, the conditions of the site, to uh, not necessarily doing incredible somersaults to solve something, but mostly solving it in a very uh, simple, but elegant and inspirational way. Great. Uh, I guess just to add one thing um, for myself, I think uh, because we are at this critical moment in history, I think the environmental and social justice acts, aspects of what we do as architects is absolutely critical. And so I really applaud Seattle for uh, integrating the common app and, and to begin to measure what we say we value in our work and to really begin to share that information across our profession. I think that's so important. Um, and then for me, I think just making sure that those uh, 
that sensibility is brought to every design uh, that we do as architects, that uh, environmental high performance, really pushing the envelope, really trying to understand how we can tackle carbon in our work is absolutely important side by side with how we can make contributions to our community and make, make them better places for everyone. So I think we're, you can see we're all very much in alignment, uh, coming at this from slightly different um, locations and vantage points, with a, but with a shared, very strong shared set of values. And we found so much to appreciate in, in this collection of projects that we, we reviewed. So um, we look forward to sharing our thoughts with you about the ones that rose to the top in the conversation. Honorable mention goes to Ainsworth and Dunn, 10 Clay, Weinstein, A plus U. So the, the jury really uh, thought this project was an important example of how we can keep uh, the resources in our, in our areas. And this is a real important part of Seattle. And so we applaud the architects for, again, looking at both the embodied and the cultural uh, resources that are in, in, in this building and thinking about how to reimagine it and add to it in a really inventive way. So we think this is a great example of uh, transformation, but again, looking at the historic resources in a really creative manner. As well as adding to the whole context of the site, um, adding the additional kind of components that really speaks to it, I think was really powerful as well, that it was both preserving the, uh, the old, the historic portions and then creating an articulation that was in line with the contextual architectural language that really elevated and amplified the, the history and the story uh, through the built environment. I think it is also important to, uh, to say that we should, uh, as society, value very much the projects that are trying to uh, re-enhance existing structures and re-densifying the, the, the places where it's already served. So this is also uh, environmentally responsible and uh, I think this is also one of the characteristics of this project. Honorable mention goes to Goldendale State Park and Observatory, Botano Studio Architecture. Uh, we selected this project for honorable mention uh, because of the project is really rooted in a community space that's really a piece of architecture that's educational. Um, that tries to really echo the simplicity of the nature and the forms and the gestures is a, a direct reflection of the program that's within and really connecting and not trying to do uh, too much, but really with simple techniques and fun formal gestures was able to create an observatory that really welcomed the community to a place where they can explore both their immediate context and the skies above. I was also enamored by the little bit of punch of colors that was used as another way of adding another dynamic of playfulness through the architecture uh, and making it really, again, feel very approachable and enticing. Honorable mention goes to Little House Big Shed, David M. Van Galen, AIA. So we really had a very long discussion on how to award domestic projects. Uh, specifically in this moment where we're living an intense uh, domestic life. Uh, but we really wanted to uh, give an award to this project that is carefully orchestrated with its uh, environment, also a net zero building that really uh, brings us with the idea on how to uh, think on how importantly 
is to have beautiful spaces to live. And I think that this one really uh, captured uh, a connection between the land and the architecture and in our in this very special environment that it sits in. Uh, so we really felt that this one was exemplary in uh, weaving all those components of design excellence together. Uh, there were many, many beautiful, beautiful residential projects, um, but this one really came to the top for us uh, because of how it in wove together those really important attributes into a very simply but beautifully and elegantly uh, designed and constructed project. Honorable mention goes to Olympic High School, Sunbird Kenny, Liao Young Architects. So we had a lot of discussion about this project uh, on the jury. Uh, we think it's a really important example of how we can transform the existing buildings and in this one, a very important part of a high school community. How can we transform and inspire the next generation? So we've all seen schools like this, and I think we all agree that this is a very inventive and uh, terrific renovation and an adaptation of this building into an inspiring and connected and transparent learning environment uh, for the students in this area. So I think this is a really important example of how we can look at resources around us and really elevate them and make them better performing, more inspiring, and just terrific places to be. And as our education system is going through this kind of uh, re self-reflection and kind of adjustment, I think it's powerful when the architecture speaks to that as well, where the architecture thinks about how the learning models are taking place, what are the best environments to actually allow for these students to excel. And this architecture really took their time, the design team, to really elevate those components and create spaces for community gathering, new programs, and really breathe new life into a structure that should help inspire and move these uh, amazing students into their journeys in, in life. Honorable mention, Rainier Beach Urban Farm and Wetlands Classroom Building, designed by Cast Architecture. Okay, with this project, we were really um, inspired by the program that was really, again, community focused and driven and rooted in really uh, enhancing and connecting, braiding the relationship between nature and the community. Having them have a place that is intimate, as well as exposing them to the environment and creating spaces that are both indoor and outdoor classrooms where it allows those four walls to create and enhance that learning experience. That part of architectural's job is not just about the built work, but the interstitial spaces and how they connect and are rooted sided in their context. So for this project, we really applaud the architects and the design team on their design and execution of breathing new life into a community and engaging them and bridging them to the natural environment. I also would add that I believe that with very simple acts, they are doing a lot. Uh, to create spaces that are functional, but are also transformational, but are also very uh, inspirational for the community. Honorable mention goes to Seattle Asian Art Museum, designed by LMN Architects. Congratulations. So the renovation and additions to this museum project, uh, everyone on the jury just really felt that this was so beautifully done and sensitively done with the new addition. Uh, this is clearly a, a much loved landmark and uh, cultural institution in Seattle. And we, we really wanted to recognize both the care and the beauty with which this work was done, and also the really inventive uh, integrations that they uh, added, like the new lighting systems, 
you know, really a contemporary addition, but really working so beautifully with this historic building. And then the intervention of the new gallery spaces, you know, making the great connection to the outdoor world and uh, just beautifully detailed and really a, a, a great next step in the evolution of this much beloved cultural institution in Seattle. Well, I think you have said it all, Marsha, but I was going to say that that the, this new space uh, really creates that space that create that this new space creates the continuity of the uh, historical building with the with the surrounding, and it just connects uh, very beautiful uh, in a in a new way towards the nature, but also for me, it's towards a, a conceptual gesture of the future. Honorable, honorable mention goes to Seattle City Light Denny Substation, designed by NBBJ. Woohoo! We thought this project deserves an award because it is to recognize that an in infrastructural project. Uh, needs to create this kind of communal and community engagement that this project does. So one of the things I think is so important as a profession is to think about all the infrastructure and uh, elements that we're going to be adding to our cities. And this is such a great example of how these important pieces of in infrastructure can actually bring life and community activities and make the community really aware of how their cities are run and uh, what is needed for uh, both an energy efficient but also just a thriving city. And I think that's why I really appreciated this project that it creates community connection to infrastructure connection. And it's really a model for what we can do in the future. And this honorable mention goes to Kenmore Hanger designed by Graham Baba Architects. So this jewel of a project was really uh, appreciated for the intensity of the small gestures that really took on this corner of the site that created an outdoor and indoor space for community gathering. Um, it really uh, no negotiated great techniques for multi-purpose and assembly, creating both an indoor and outdoor living space, which was powerful as well. Um, seeing the community engagements through their submission was really powerful through their design, as well as their uh, sustainability achievements with the project. I think that this building is m modest in scope and beautifully uh, done in, in execution. Um, but as Pascal said, that the, it's really the gift to this community. It's a very welcoming, uh, transparent place for everyone. Uh, and we just wanted to recognize it for uh, the simplicity of this gesture and, and the great amount of benefit it, that it gives the community, as well as it's also high performance um, in terms of environmental sustainability. Well, my name is Si Yu Chu, and I work for the Milho Partnership. I am honored today to have the opportunity to introduce you all about the Young Voice Selection Award and our Young Voice Series this year. The Young Voice Selection was initiated in 2018, and I was lucky to be one of the first year panelists. Oftentimes, after leaving um, university. At least I feel like young designers often find themselves without clear and direct avenues to participate in a very serious design discourse. So we are trying to reinforce the value of young people and young designers for their unique perspectives. And we wanted to provide and establish a platform with, for these perspectives to be shared with the design community. This year, three talented young professions 
were given the opportunity to review, deliberate, and select one build submissions. They are Makesa Figueroa from SRG Partnership, Eugenio Tulubiatis from Integras Architecture, and Molly Evans from Ocean Quindic. I was really impressed by their conversation during their deliberation process. It was inspiring, energetic, and enthusiastic. I'm so excited to hand over to the three of them to share the, their selection now. So with that being said, uh, we're happy to announce that the 2020 Seattle Young Voices Award winner is uh, Seattle City Light Denny Substation. And I'll let Marquesa talk a little bit more about that. So it's really the big idea is what made us choose this as the winner for the 2020 selection. It really broke through the idea of a typical typology of a substation and um, really brought that education factor into a building. And I think this building, you know, we thought this building really does a great way of bringing education to the public in many realms. And it also acts as really shows the prominence of Seattle as a commitment for energy um, and its location of being in an urban city in downtown. And to add to that, I think in, in our deliberation process, sustainability was a very important uh, factor and that uh, we're so happy to see shows up in a, in a lot of projects and um, we thought that this building not only embraces sustainability and is really pushing the, the boundaries in that regards, but it also um, allows the, the, the user and the public to learn um, through the building. Yeah, it's something that um, a, a, a services building or a substation is, is typically a very insular building. And we felt that this project really kind of turned that concept on its head and turned that typology inside out. So it's bringing the community to it um, rather than keeping it away. And um, also serving as an education platform, creating um, all four public sides of the building and creating a place for the public uh, to, to congregate and meet. The team, worked with community partners, which we felt really engaged more than just the typical client. Um, and that was really compelling for us to see um, working with uh, Seattle utilities and um, resources, which are typically not done. Um, and I, I think we are really um, excited that this project can serve as inspiration uh, for other cities um, and for more of this type of collaboration and type of um, public spaces and infrastructure that um, not only has a purpose in the city but also gives back to the community. Architecturally, it does a great job of breaking up that ground plane and really having the people engage in the building, not just through learning about uh, energy and um, Seattle uh, city light, but also being more tactile and how you navigate through the space. And I think as a project, this um, building really pushes the boundaries of uh, what we as an architect should think of as our responsibility. Um, we think that this project doesn't just meet the basic requirements, but goes above and beyond and really served um, to try to engage the community and do a lot more than what was initially asked of them. Award of Merit goes to Blakely Elementary School, Bethune. I think uh, of, 
I saw this uh, in this uh, awards uh, process that there were many schools, many different types of schools, elementary and um, high schools, and even university buildings. But we were especially attracted to these very particular one because of the orchestration of the um, space but uh, uh, and, uh, and the materiality within its environment. We also appreciated the respect for nature that the complex kind of developed, that the programming was really braided through the trees and the landscaping, and then how they also leveraged that tectonic of touch where a lot of those columns were kind of left to feel the tree and have the students learn from the environment as well, where it really was about simple gestures that created a very high performing project um, that really taught the students about both their learning environment, but also about their context and how you can respect both of them and that be part of your built environment. And I think that the connections between the indoors and outdoors and just the way that the building is integrated into the site and the topography uh, just is a really brilliant solution. And it's going to be a loved school for many, many generations. Uh, so I really applaud both its um, a little bit of whimsy that will be fun for the children, um, but also its rigor in which it addresses uh, environmental and high performance issues in the building. Uh, and it's, it is going to serve this community for many generations. I think it's also carefully orchestrated um, uh, regarding the scales of which is addressing. So it is very thoughtful with the kids, but it is also uh, a welcoming environment for everybody. So I think it's very beautiful how they are thinking on the scale of the children, but also how adults can uh, really create an environment for the kids, a learning environment for the kids. Award of Merit goes to Bird Bar Place. SHKS Architects. Architecture has both the power to harm, but in this position, heal. And really pulling the path and the historic nature of the context and really start to envision what this project could be is really powerful. As one of the conceptual submissions, this bar, uh, sorry, Bird Bar Place um, really speaks to becoming a renovation that re really highlights and creates a space for the community. And it's powerful in the way that they integrated that historic components, both in the materiality and into the spaces, the planning and how it's gestured and cited into the project. But this became one of the products that we really enjoyed and was really powerful and inspired by. We want to uh, you know, commend the, the group for submitting this project and and hope that recognition of the, and through this awards program will, will help them in their journey to have this become a completed project. Uh, these types of uh, renovations and integrations into our communities are so important, uh, particularly when they capture such an important story and a narrative in the community. More and more conceptual projects should be treated like this one. Award of Merit goes to Lincoln High School, the SETI Architects. Um, so I would say that, um, as we mentioned before, there were many projects that were uh, really addressing uh, education spaces. And we think that really enhancing the existing structure bringing it up to date in a beautiful way to inspire kids is what we need to do in that sector. There is already a huge um, a amount of square feet uh, built in the world of uh, schools. We just need to bring them into a contemporary way of understanding learning. And this is a great example. I think that this really is a brilliant solution for a really, uh, big and prominent landmark structure within a community to maintain that building and, and the strength of that history, but then to have it transformed for uh, 21st century learning 
in such a dynamic way, I think is really commendable. And the important carbon story about this project, uh, the embodied carbon that has been preserved and by keeping this historic building, not only its cultural references and its landmark uh, building, but just the care with which this group uh, thought about its carbon um, footprint and also all the other uh, attributes of uh, sustainability and the framework for design excellence. And as a result, it creates a place of learning that truly inspires uh, the next generation, um, as well as explain to them how the built environment can be enhanced and be tailored to what they need and their journey forward. This award of merit goes to the Louisiana Children's Museum designed by Methune. This Louisiana Children's Museum was a project that we were really inspired by. We love the fact that they really spoke to the historic nature and the architectural languages of Louisiana through the beads that are integrated into the railings and all the kind of screens and those porch ideas. These pockets and moments where kids are able to actually experience the environment in a safe and protected way, I thought was really powerful. And as a juror, we agreed deserved really recognition for the great design solutions, um, as well as really how it's cited on the context, the beautiful spaces that it's sculpted and created, and all the opportunities for engagement and learning that the those who visit the museum are able to marvel in. I think one of the key factors for me in this project was uh, the special sensitivity to the environment, to the place where it is, to the connection with the river, but not only to the connection of the river, to the possibility of living through many years with the river on the side. And I think connecting children and families to water in a positive and an educational way in this environment is really important. And the building is, is so beautifully executed. Very simple use of palette of materials. Again, a high performance building. Um, but really, uh, as my jurors had said, that the spaces that are uh, sculpted and crafted between indoors and outdoors really makes this a beautiful place and one that will be, again, an important part of the community for a long time. And this award of merit goes to Past, Present, Future, A Tense Balance by Nova B. The jury team and I were really inspired by this project through their use of uh, community engagement, uh, really leveraging a project and technology in a way that embeds the history in a way that it's accessible. Architecture is a unique language, and if you don't know the vernacular, it is very difficult for you to be part of those conversations. And these brilliant designers really thought about a way of creating an extension of that language in a way that's visual and bringing it forth through the process of how the community understands both the history of a site as well as the future goals for it. And to do so with so much community outreach and really asking them what they needed really serves as a beacon of the way that architects can take a backseat from understanding that we are leaders, but truly a resource to those we serve. So for that, we are highly impressed and really uh, celebrate this project. Totally, oh, go ahead, Tatiana. <laughs> I'm normally very skeptical of our argumented reality. And I really think that these are the things that are worth to commend because I think this is how we should use those technologies. And this is exactly why they, they are, why they should be developed and why they should be used. And just to add one further comment, I think that uh, the way that this very clever uh, system uh, puts daylight on both the history and the culture of the community, but the uh, using it for engagement in terms of what, what will the changes in the city be like uh, with new development? I think that this tool would be incredibly important to share with the community to really understand what the changes in their 
uh, in their city, in their neighborhoods, are going to be like. Uh, so it, it just provides a, a level of engagement and uh, connection with the community in a really deep way about uh, the, the built environment. And this award of merit goes to Staying Power, designed by Framework Cultural Placemaking and Seattle Office of Arts and Culture. Congratulations. So this, this project we think is really important and it, it addresses a theme that we spent a lot of time talking about in, in our deliberations about how our cities are changing and those cultural components are changing and what a vital role culture and uh, plays in our cities and communities. So we really applaud this uh, award-winning uh, report um, about how to address um, maintaining that cultural integrity in our in our communities. And again, community engagement being the forefront of the technique and the, the process here is critical to say that we understand what you need because you told us directly and to create spaces that are focused on them as well is powerful to show how architecture specifically can be a resource for them and a space for them to come and to learn and to be self expressive. So for this project, we really commend the design team for thinking about in detail ways in all these different parameters that could be advised, considered, and create successful models for engaging the community and creating a space that really elevates them. This is what I call architecture as a platform. And I think if we all, uh, if we can build a built environment with platforms like this, we will definitely uh, change or steer the way that the future is going. Award of Merit goes to Candida Building for Innovative Sustainable Design, the Miller Hall Partnership. We as the jury were really impressed of the Candida Building for the Georgia Tech as a, a building that it is integral uh, uh, and it's really important to have a space for learning that it, its integrity is already uh, teaching the future generations the building it is not only beautifully orchestrated uh, with an impressive and very high quality design but it is a, a building that is true to its values from its core from its structure towards really even the, the image that it projects of being a building that is opening, that it's open, welcoming, uh, and integrating not only environmental um, ideas to it, but really uh, engage in its uh, community by giving out social spaces, community spaces that will in, uh, make this educational uh, really engaging and integral as well as the being a product that's part of the Georgia Tech campus, those that it impacts really starts to send all these future thinkers of all those ways that architecture can join the effort in building justice um, is also being integrated into the learning and education process of the campus and through the site. That not just the students and the faculty get to enjoy it, but the community as well is powerful. And in, in their words, more wood, less carbon really was an, a mantra that they spoke to through the selection, the materiality, the palette and the structural systems that is both exposed and expressed and celebrated through this incredible design. And I think that the, the really strong presence it has on campus, it really announces that this, you know, this is the future. This is what we need to do, a regenerative building uh, that really speaks to the goals of the university and the goals of, of this next generation. So we, we all really felt that this was an incredibly strong project that both on a technical level, uh, in terms of the spaces it creates for the people who will use it in the community, the greater community, that again, this is really an excellent example of, um, of high performance and uh, high design excellence in, in all of its uh, different ways.
My name is Chris Meek, and I'm a faculty member, member in the Department of Architecture at the University of Washington, where I direct the Integrated Design Lab. We are super excited to be in our fifth year working with AIA Seattle on the Energy and Design Award, which reflects their deep commitment to sustainability. I'd like to thank the Northwest Energy Efficiency Alliance for sponsoring the award, and I'd also like to thank my team at IDL, especially Michael Gilbride, who did the technical heavy lifting on the data analysis. This year, we have incorporated the AIA Committee on the Environment Common App tool with the award submission. The Common App includes a more holistic view of sustainability, including water, walkability, equity, materials, and of course, energy. In creating this new submission requirement, we have maintained the rigor of the Energy and Design Award from years past, while expa expanding the lens through which we view our projects. Submitters have the option of providing the energy savings delivered by the code, by sharing modeled energy performance, or by compiling actual energy savings. For me, the most exciting thing about the award is seeing where the region's most aspirational projects sit relative to our 2030 commitment goals. This year, we have 17 qualifying projects, which is approximately set 20% of all submissions. Given that the 2030 commitment requires an 80% reduction in carbon emissions for building designed in 2020, this is quite an accomplishment. I'm especially proud that the Energy and Design Award is not just based on numbers and that the jury has the opportunity to really look at the energy challenge and acknowledge the innovation of our design community. I'm really excited to see which of these projects was selected by our jury. The Energy and Design Award goes to the Candida Building for Innovative Sustainable Design by the Miller Hall Partnership. So in addition, um, this project we also recognize for the Energy and Design Award because of its really incredible performance and how it's really pushed the, the edge. You know, it's meeting the living building challenge. Uh, it's, you know, as uh, Pascal said, it's doing a, a really great job in really pushing uh, CLT and mass timber and wood in construction. Uh, it's performing great in terms of rainwater and stormwater management and uh, on-site renewable energy and uh, a beautiful place uh, for the students in the community uh, to come together and to learn. I think that the, the, the building, it does, does this very um, even physical of responding towards the, the relationship in a stage uh, and choreographed set of relationships that open and close uh, the environment in a beautiful way. Meaning that uh, by um, human being being able to enter to this building and exit towards this building has all these stages of relationship within the interior towards the exterior that are very beautiful. All while maintaining design excellence. Uh, making sure that we're not decoupling the ideas, but really integrating them, that a project that performs and gives back to the earth in which it sits can also be a beacon of beauty and design excellence. So for that, we are truly impressed and are honored to review and learn more about this project. Award of Honor goes to the Burke Museum of Natural History and Culture, Olson Kundig. This project really was incredible as a museum and how it rethought the way it really interacts with its audience and its community. First, it had a Native American advisory committee to make sure that the how they're representing and capturing the traditions and culture is in line with what they need and what they want and what they envision. They created a, a structure that also becomes a safe place for the artifacts and the important characters of those traditions and of their history. And turn the project inside out 
by making the archives visible and accessible so that traditionally, instead of things being in storage, they are full on display in a safe and secure way. They've integrated programs that really allow for the community to engage and to learn and to rehearse and participate in those traditions and allowing that history to be part of their everyday life. And if that wasn't enough, they also integrated that history and understanding of knowledge through the landscaping and creative native plantings and the ritual of enhancing and nurturing those plant lives as part of the learning experience. So truly this project has been um, a pleasure to get to know, to be inspired by, and to really be, uh, to understand the visibility on all levels, making sure that the community feels seen, feels safe, protected and elevated, and for a place for it to be safe to really celebrate. This to me is uh, architecture and spatial justice. And I applaud the designers, the design team, and all the community leaders and members who are participating in the designing and execution of this incredible project. I really would like to enhance the idea that this building pursues of integrity, of honesty. And uh, it, it, it is not only listed in one of the values that they're pursuing, the durability and longevity of the building itself, but also of the, of the concept that it's founded with. And I think that the in, uh, uh, continuity brings also the possibility of really communicating and um, relating to, to anyone, to uh, a, a, the public at large without men making any distinctions and it really what i like is that it it does that in a, in an ethical way that it's spread out through the building so it's not only about even the entrances of the building that are very democratic it is very homogenic it is very open but it is also in its core as pascal was saying with uh, the the reversing the museum inside out really integrating all its parts in a beautiful way. So just to add a little bit to um, what my fellow jurors have said so eloquently, uh, I think that this building uh, really does represent design excellence in its truest form. Uh, it is about connections to our cultures and our community and our environment and our land. And really, I love how this entire building is about celebrating the important connections between the natural world and our and our cultural connections and it's it's a place that you can just imagine is going to be this lively engagement with these beautiful artifacts and really making that connection between um, you know, bringing these artifacts to light to the community and also uh, bringing to light the scientific endeavors that are happening uh, to preserve uh, this important part of our culture and in its connection to the environment. So this to me really is a really terrific and fantastic uh, project that fully deserves the honor award. Wait, award of honor? Cottonwood Canyon Experience Center, Signal Architecture and Research. We really wanted to give the highest award to, to these beautiful projects that it really embeds all the values that architecture should promote in a very simple, beautiful, orchestrated way. It, it, it is a place for in social interaction, but also with the, the possibility of understanding the history, the, the very core root uh, 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 of this place uh, while making exactly as a space for the ability of the connection with nature with others and for me then that may means the connection with nature at large as well as really being smart and strategic about the space planning that part of their programming is both an indoor and outdoor space 
um, the integration of the tactile information and textures that they created and these really smart gestures of penetrating through the facade to allow you to have that visibility. The fact that they have these large garage gates that open and are really bring for the communities and the programs to be really be enhanced. Um, as well as it all being rooted in this very important mission of education and creating access to this beautiful landscape and really again ensuring and understanding and learning and teaching the environment and the communities and how they are intertwined and should live homogeneously together. So through those textures on the floor and the materials set selected for the project, this is a project that we really believe deserves the highest honor in their design execution, their simplicity, their strategic nature, and the beautiful core values for what the project represents. I, I think this project is really a fantastic example of how very simple and refined gestures can be so powerful, and particularly in this powerful setting. So this building, every, every choice of material, every um, volumetric uh, solution is really rooted in its place and its history. And again, just elegantly uh, elevates that uh, to, uh, to a piece of architecture of great beauty. Um, I think that it's a mission to support lifelong stewardship of uh, the natural, cultural, and historic places is absolutely evident in every part of this design. And I really applaud the this state park system and this uh, community of people and the architect for coming together to make this elegant, simple building that is so profound in this beautiful landscape and will provide great moments of community and education and gathering for many generations and will be much loved. I would add that this is for me, uh, what I can say, uh, responsibility in architecture, because every single piece of material here is doing its best to create uh, a beautiful orchestrated environment, not uh, wasting any type of resources in any way all while achieving uh, design and environmental excellence and really pushing that envelope there, that they were really able to meet and excel the uh, 2030 challenge and really perform on a beautiful level. So they are an inspiration on all aspects. They talk the talk and they embed that into their built environment. And this award of honor goes to Dun, 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 dun. Hugo House, designed by NBBJ. Congratulations. So the Hugo House, we all thought was a fantastic project. It really addresses something that we as a jury talked about, you know, about the profound changes in our city and, and again, these cultural institutions um, that you know, also have to adapt and change or disappear uh, in some cases, unfortunately. So this is such a great example of addressing the change, changes that are happening in Capitol Hill and in Seattle. And then this is a very interesting way in which the cultural life and the community space of Hugo House has been reimagined inside of the new development, although we don't really see from this presentation what the new building is that uh, replaced that collection of smaller scale buildings. We think that this is an incredible project for maintaining uh, the important, somewhat uh, eccentric community spaces that are in our cities and finding new places for them to thrive. Uh, this is a beautifully executed project, um, taking simple and durable and cost-effective materials and elevating those materials to a thing of beauty um, and also with great creativity and uh, unexpected, uh, really beautiful moments in the, in the design. And again, providing community spaces and convening spaces and learning spaces for uh, the, the creative and writing activities in, uh, in Seattle. And also being brilliant about using some of the materials and the language and the architecture that was there in the existing building and allowing that to breathe new light into this reimagined programming that still pulls the past forward into a way that's uh, legible 
and uh, part of the story and song of those who enter and experience the spaces, but also be part of that texture and the visual language of how one experiences through creating quotes and messaging throughout the different surfaces, skylights and floors. Uh, and providing textured moments of sheets of uh, writings to writings on the walls, all set the reminder that inspiration and architecture go in hand in hand as one embraces the history of the context, understanding a little bit of one of their local heroes, and also identifying the hero within them. So for that, I really applaud and I'm very grateful to have seen and witnessed, uh, look through this project and really be happy to honor the great design and the work of the entire team. I would just only like to highlight how this project really is about the core values that it's pursuing and that we need to understand that architecture doesn't need those big gestures to do a lot. And this is uh, really tackling many issues at once, rescuing uh, an important place for the community, maintaining history, which is truly important, but also make a place uh, be relevant again today. And this award of honor goes to Wagner Education Center at the Center for Wooden Boats, designed by Olsen Kundig. Woohoo! <laughs> this project really deserved elevation at the highest honor um, for their beautiful execution um, and, and is the project. First, they took a site that needed healing and repair um, and was able to take that brownfield and create the structure that became an asset and a resource for the community. It also created a bridge and a gateway to the waterfront and allowed for the community to have full access to this amenity that most are uh, separated from. Then they created these beautiful spaces that really allow those communities to understand and learn about the techniques and the understanding the, the integral portions of how boats are part of the history and the, the culture of the Seattle landscape and how they can learn from it and yield those lessons into their everyday life. It's a space that has welcomed many various ages and groups and demographics to understand and learn from that history but also all while doing so in a beautifully executed, very simple, uh, strategic and genuine way of architecture that all strives for environmental justice by creating a project that meets and exceeds the 2030 challenge. So this project really was a pleasure and a joy to review and get to know and see the amazing spaces and the actual cultural impact that it has through their community, through the design of this space. I really like how the, the description of the project is stated as a building, as a functional armature. And I think that it, it brings me, the word armature brings me to uh, a space that holds things together. And I think this place holds a lot of things together. Not only the connection of the community, but the physical connection between the city, the downtown and the lake, but most of all, the heritage of the, mm -hmm. uh, of the culture and traditions of boat making in, in the area, which is really integrated in a, a beautiful way with a simple design, but very powerful. And I think one thing to note is it's equal access for everyone. Uh, I think that's incredibly important and one of the profound things about this um, modest project is how it does connect to the community intergenerationally and from all, all parts of uh, Seattle through the youth and other civic programs that they have here. How it, it makes this important connection to the history and to that deep connection to, uh, to water and, uh, and boats and sailing in Seattle. I think that the reference to the vernacular uh, structure but in a contemporary and reinterpreted way is really beautifully done. And having all of these great components woven together, uh, again, in true design excellence, um, bringing this cultural and uh, community connection, integrating that with a high performance building, as Pascal said, it's meeting the 2030 uh, uh, metrics. Um, all of these things just bring this together as a real community asset. And it's a, a humble building that's beautifully executed elegantly detailed 
and is going to serve, again, this community extremely well for many generations and will be very well loved. And not to forget that this building really um, it performs very well in terms of the environmental aspect and it meets the 2030 challenge. Right. Well, I guess we could say, and that yeah. girl's face in the boat, <laughs> can, we add, can we add this in? Uh, the the best statement of this this what we all what? see ourselves in that girl in the right so the best statement of success for this project is the look on those kids face faces they are just really enjoying everything and that's that's what uh, architecture should bring to our communities. We all thank our jury, Marcia, Pascal, and Tatiana, for their hard work and for their time invested in our design community. And congratulations to all of this year's winners. Thank you for joining us for another incredible celebration of design. And thank you for being a fundamental part of AIA Seattle. Have a wonderful evening. On behalf of all of us at AIA Seattle, it's been a great year in awards. Okay, everybody have a pleasant evening.